Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, helpful worm farming community, you are in the right place. Today I'm going to try and harvest some castings and also talk about my European night crawlers. I started with the ENCs four years ago from cocoons from the crazy worm lady and then two years ago again I was gifted a pound from northeastworms.com. Now I have about eight pounds of the European night crawlers. Let's see if we can get a bit of a harvest from over here and then we'll evaluate them and feed them up. Okay, even though this is a very small area, what we're going to do is a little bit like a light harvest. So I'm just going to pull some off the top and we're going to keep going until we run into worms. Now, if you have any questions or experiences that you want to share in the comments below, please feel free to go ahead and do that, you know, in any of the videos, really. Uh, I always like to hear what uh, other people do, and then also, if I don't know the answer to one of your questions, then I'm sure one of the other viewers who has experience with worm farms can also help you. Okay. Looks like we're doing pretty good here. See, the idea of this wedge system is that this portion down here will be finished and pretty dry, although this isn't real dry. And the worms will have moved down to that end where there is going to be some fresh food for them to eat. So that way I can skim things off the top here without running into too many worms. And it's, it's actually... Of all the different systems that I have ran previously, it is definitely the easiest if you have enough room to do it. Sometimes it doesn't work really well. This is a half of a 55 gallon barrel. And I will go ahead and put the dimensions up there for you. But uh, this is a good size area for the worms. This is half the size of my worm bin that I call blue. We're up to about two gallons so far, so we're doing good. I am went and purchased a new raised bed that I'm going to fill, and having some fresh castings on hand to get that soil inoculated with all the good biology that comes from worm castings is going to be a big help. So as you can see, I'm still not running into any worms here, so that is, that is great. In a regular worm bin, the worms are all over the place, and you either have to light harvest them, or you have to uh, spend quite a bit of time separating them out. In this kind, when it works ideally, then you don't really even have to mess with the worms. The worms are already gone. All right, I'm going to need another bucket. I may have mentioned in previous videos that I get about 2,000 pounds, I'll put the metric equivalent up there, of worms from all of my worm bins combined per 12 months. Of course, the worms do work a little faster when it's warm. Right now it is 78 degrees in my basement, and the worms do work faster at that than they do at the temperatures during the winter time. It gets down to about 55 degrees here in the basement and the worms do slow down some. But these have been very, very good worms. Good worms! Getting out of these castings so that I can get, looks like it's going to be at least five gallons of castings here. I haven't harvested this bin for a good long time, so I'm glad that these castings are available. I've done quite a bit with blue, but I have not got anything out of the European night crawlers for some time. Alright, I will probably stop when we get to five gallons. All right, one tiny bit more and we will have five gallons. And I've yet to run in to any worms, even though it's actually pretty damp down there. Okay, I think that's all that's going to fit in the five gallon bucket. Now let me move you around and I can show you what we've accomplished. Okay, here we are with the five gallons removed from over here. Now I'm going to put you down and we're going to take all of the top dry fluff here and move it towards that end, which is the feeding end. And then we're going to scoot the pre-harvest castings over and make room for the feeding we're going to do today. Okay, so we're just going to take all this fluff from the top and move that down because that's nowhere near finished. 
the worms are going to need to work on that for a significant amount of time before it is done. And then we just take this and move this part over. Let me switch perspectives here. Okay. So I'm just going to take all of this that is in process and move that over. And then this is also part of when I talk about doing the fluffing. You can see how very muddy this is. You can see even a thumbprint in there. So that's not a good uh, pre-harvest moisture. We want to make sure that the air gets to it so that, you know, maybe in another month or two, I will have more castings available to start seed, seed starting. I also do uh, use this in my bonsais, and so in the winter I also repot my tropical bonsais. So then that will be what the next harvest gets used for. This is very heavy and very muddy, which is pretty typical. It's about 72% moisture in the basement, so that's pretty wet. two-year-old pumpkin stem. Then everything just continues to get moved down. Now we're starting to see quite a bit of worms in this part. And you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, they don't like it when you do that. Well, maybe not, but it is for their own good. And so they are just going to have to deal with it. And you know, additionally, this is a worm channel. Um, you guys watch to see what I do, and uh, sometimes I don't mess with worms for a good long time, but I don't videotape me doing nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, that makes sense, right? All right, so now we're getting into probably close to halfway into the bin here. So I'm trying to be careful. I don't know where I fed last exactly, so I don't wanna start flipping around half-eaten food but looks like they've done a good job here. I'm gonna mound this up pretty tight up here on the edge. I have a good size feeding for these guys today, so I need to make some room. It is the beginning of September, so we usually start seeing the furnace kick on in October, late October, depending. So I wanna make sure that these bins are in good healthy shape before I start having moisture problems in the opposite direction where my bins are getting too dry. All right, let's flip around and look at this other side of the bin. All right, so I'm still moving things over. I'm just being a little bit more careful. You can see we definitely have more worms as we're getting closer to where we fed last. And it's also getting super muddy. So it's definitely past due for me to get some air in this bin. Yeah, this is like almost like mud. Okay. Looks like they're all full of the uh, mango shell there. Okay. Now we're getting to the area where it might have been fed last time. So I'm going to start going a little slower because it would be nice if we got to see a worm ball. Looks like we got a lot of seeds and uh, looks like tomato skins. Okay. I'm not sure what we fed last time. Obviously something to do with canning because right now I'm, I'm in full tilt mode trying to make spaghetti sauce and salsa and pickled things and hot sauce. If you guys can or something like that, uh, put in the comments below. What do you what do you do with your garden food besides just, you know, eat it raw in salads? Do you guys can or what do you do with it? Give it away. All right, you can see the big huge difference between the paper that was fed last time and what it looks like now. You can actually see the individual shreds of cardboard in there. It's been about three weeks since we've been looking in on these guys. 
So it's uh, to be expected that it would be in progress, but definitely not finished. There's probably about five, four or five pounds of worms in here. We did have that little visitor that came in and probably ate some of the worms. So we're going to build up the population again. Typically a bin this size probably has about eight pounds of worms. But uh, we had a little visitor in here. And um, although I wasn't happy about having an opossum in my basement, I'm glad it wasn't in the regular part of my house. All right, let's scoot up here and get these guys fed. If you guys are finding this content useful, why not click that subscribe button and join my worm family? Let's get them some bedding. Now this is my prepared bedding with the shredded cardboard and coconut coir. And then you can see the little white specks in here are the eggshells. I do a little mini tutorial in the last video that I posted. I can link that at the end if you want to see that. So let's get these guys some food. I have got some bread that I have soaked. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, if you put bread in your bins, it will generally turn hard as a rock if you don't get it nice and sop and wet before you feed it to them. All right, here's some fresh tomatillo skins. Got a tomato that uh, started rotting on the vine, unfortunately. Got a little bit of cabbage here. A little bit of asparagus. And then we got some tea bags and stuff. Now let's put a cap of bedding on top of this so that these guys, you know, and all their food can go to the worms and not any other bug that might be flitting around in the basement. Okay, now I'm going to show you a secret. This bin actually has a twin that I have never put onto a video before. When it got to be uh, wintertime and I had to make space, I took my European Nightcrawlers and I divided them in two. Half in one half of the 55 gallon bin, and then there was an identical 55 gallon bin right below it. Kind of like bunk beds for worms. Here we are at the bin below that you've never seen before. I run it exactly the same. I'm probably not going to harvest it because I probably haven't I probably haven't fed it exactly the same. It probably gets less because I forget about it too. But let me put you down and we will scoot everything over and get them fed too. So I'm going to move over some of this bedding here and find a spot to feed them in. And if we kind of look under here, we definitely see there's just as many worms here as there was in the bin on top. They just don't uh, get to be famous. But yeah, you can see the uh, tomatoes and everything there. So we're going to take that dry bedding from up on top, put it on the bottom, scoot some of this finished stuff over, and then get them some new food. They're also going to get some bread and some tomatoes. Then they get the rest of five gallon bin of the bedding. It's usually what I do is I divide the I make five gallons of bedding for each one of the uh, the bins, and uh, I split it between the two of them. All right, there we are at the end of the bunk bed for the European Nightcrawlers. If you want to see more European Nightcrawlers, I have a playlist I will put right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.